<laughs> so uh, here is uh, here is uh, the reading series that I, I want to go through. Um, it has had a change of title because currently uh, the title of Thomas Friedman's uh, latest uh, uh, op-ed in the New York Times is called Putin had no clue how many of us would be watching. But if you uh, saw Putin didn't know social media exists. Yeah, no, he was that caught him completely off guard. But if you were if you were quick and you and, or maybe you saw the tweet we put out, you would have noticed that uh, Friedman's original headline for this uh, op-ed was Ukraine is the first real world war, mm -hmm. which is just an incredible claim, which I think we should we should uh, like they may have they may have edited the headline, but I think we need to uh, judge this piece by his original claim, which is that this is the first real world war. So we'll we'll read through this and see if uh, uh, you get you in the chat uh, agree that the other two didn't count. By Maybe the way, I think I think I think this is a cool like segment to do. So yes, no, I thought uh, this is yeah no. Which I'm just I'm gonna just steal. From Your screen you. share goes like it gets uh, blurry sometimes. So Does I don't it? know if it's oh. like that for everyone else. It goes it in and out. Yeah, it might just be the the internet, but all right, I will. I'll, I'll go read through this. Everyone, sit back, relax, and uh, and enjoy. So, almost six weeks into the war between Russia and Ukraine, I'm beginning to wonder if this conflict isn't our first true world war, much more than World War One or World War Two ever was. In this war, which I think of as World War Wired, virtually everyone on the planet can either observe the fighting at a granular level, participate in some way, or be affected economically. No matter where they live. Wait, wait, just just to know, World War One had over twenty million deaths. That's yes. Mm -hmm. All right, go on. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also happened in a lot more places. Right. Uh, so while the battle on the ground that triggered World War Wired, oh, he's gonna is he gonna really he's gonna continue this? Okay, great. Uh, is ostensibly over who should control Ukraine? Do not be fooled. This has quickly turned into the big battle in quotation marks, between t the two most dominant political systems in the world today. Uh, free market, rule of law, democ democracy. Oh, God, no, what did I do? I've scrolled. Oh, shit. Uh, democracy versus authoritarian kleptocracy. The Swedish... Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's pause it for a second. Yeah. First of all, to thank Sam the Mannerman for a uh, two-month subscription. Oh, hell yeah, Sam. Um, but second... The, the the phrasing that they use, authoritarian kleptocracy, it's written in a way to not only frame Russia, but also to somehow loop China into it as well. Because China and Russia are two very different states, mm -hmm. and you have to like create some kind of theoretical boundary to fit them both into. Yes. Yes. It's authoritarian. Uh, unlike, are there non-authoritarian kleptocracies? No. no. Yes. Are there? What the hell is a kleptocracy anyway? Let's go. Yeah, that, okay, I, I'm an idiot. Let's. I need to Google that. <laughs> I think we're both sitting here pretending like we know what. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you knew. Uh, in a, yeah, okay. Yeah, in a kleptocracy, corrupt politicians enrich themselves secretly outside the rule of law through kickbacks, bribes, and special favors, or they simply direct state funds to themselves and their associates. That's funny because uh, Putin's government is is extremely strict with how. Like the capitalists inside the country are allowed to operate, and obviously we know how strict the Chinese Communist Party is. There's, mm -hmm. you know, to the point where, you know, if if one company, like if one private company in China, like invents something, their intellectual property has to go through the state and be dispersed into other co other companies for even even development of companies. Yeah, but in the West, um, they would the, uh, the the that's that's the government uh, like the doing underhanded enrichment of itself. Mm -hmm. that's like that it, it's like you say you say that and going like well they're not doing that but there's someone like thomas friedman would like mm -hmm. that's this is this is authoritarianism mm -hmm. this is not well yeah it, it, it is authoritarianism i mean so the, the example i gave of like intellectual property in china not being allowed to stay private mm -hmm. that's like authoritarian the state is like saying you invented this now we're gonna take it and make sure everyone knows about it you can't just yeah. be hidden forever right so yeah, I mean, from the perspective of the capitalists, it is very authoritarian. Yeah. But from the perspective of like us, it's a good thing. Yeah. You know. And uh, oh, uh, Pa Peniak, thank you for the follow. Uh, that, but that's the thing I'm like, 
because authoritarian, I don't like that term so much because that is a very subjective term. Because it's just like so yeah, it depends on the class, depends yeah. on who's subjecting who. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's also just it means like authoritarian is just like, well, they have the government has too much authority that, that has mm -hmm. more authority than I'm comfortable with. And it's I, that seems to kind of be a bit of a like a uh, it's a subjective uh, a judgment for each person. Depending uh, on I, I have a clip of Putin being authoritarian to capitalists. If you, if you want to play it. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, we can... while, while you read, I'll pull it up. It's like All a right. two minute clip. It's like actually fun to watch. All right. Um, so here we go. Uh, so uh, versus authoritarian kleptocracy, the Swedish expert on the Russian economy, Anders Aslund, remarked to me. Does that name ring a bell? Anders Aslund? Nope. Uh, he's been losing it. Anders As Everyone, if you want to do a quick Google search of him, uh, Anders Aslund, uh, he's been saying some wild shit since this started. Uh, yeah, he's so... Uh, yeah, and I'll let you guys go through it, but you can basically pick. Yeah, he's the Atlantic Council guy. Um, he's a he's a bit of a ghoul. No, uh, Aslund, uh, A S L U N D. And it's got a little little circley thing on the top of the A. Uh, so through this war, though this war is far from over, and Vladimir Putin may still find a way to prevail and come out stronger. If he doesn't, it could be a watershed in the conflict between democratic and undemocratic systems. He's right. It, it is worth recalling that World War II put an end to fascism and that the Cold War put an end to orthodox communism, eventually even in China. So what happens on the streets of Kiev, Mariupol, and Donbass uh, region could influence political systems far beyond Ukraine and far into the future. Absolutely true. Can you, can you pause here? I sent you a two-minute video of Putin being authoritarian. Okay, we'll pull that up. But like in a good way. Uh, it's not that one. Screen. But but that writer is absolutely right. Like, yeah, two different ways are in contention right now: the authoritarian way and the free market way. Yeah, no, the, like everyone, yeah. like depend. It, it's it's all basically a uh, like depending on how you want to frame each side mm -hmm. and what they mm -hmm. actually represent. But it's I think everyone's very clear that this is sort of a like this is this is it's game time game time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's friday night lights everyone's getting uh putting on the jerseys and warming up <laughs> uh let's continue yeah so uh indeed other autocratic leaders like china like china's are watching russia carefully they see its economy being weakened by western sanctions thousands of its young technology technologists Allegedly. fleeing Ooh, just in time just in time to listen to the friedman piece welcome oh, welcome hey what's up How's it going? Oh, you know, it's uh, it's great. Um, now, uh, the culture TV has the ability to go out and conduct field interviews because your boy went and got all the necessary equipment. So yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Oh yeah. You got background noise, by the way, Q. You should fix that. I got background noise. How's it now? Good. Better. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. So oh, what, good, did I, yeah. what did I miss? Sorry. Sorry. I missed uh, so much of the show. I was just, um, yeah, I, I, I was I was giving a run around. No worries. We're, we're reading, reading and analyzing. Oh, yeah. God, How, is this Thomas Friedman? Yeah, this is what well, uh, originally called and by the opening, still the spiritual title is uh, how Ukraine is the first real world war. Oh, Jesus Christ. World War One and World War Two didn't count. They don't count. They're, they they were just little skirmishes compared. To I don't understand. So what makes this a world war? Oh, God. world war wired. Hate this dude. Oh my god. Virtually so everyone much. on the planet can either observe the fighting at a granular level, participate in some way, or be affected economically. No matter. Yeah, everyone what can see the war crimes happening. Yes. Um, and it's saying that there's it's a it's a it's a, ba a battle between systems between uh the big battle between the two most so dominant you mean to tell me that nobody in yemen has a smartphone you mean to tell me that nobody in uh in libya has a smartphone nobody in gaza has a smartphone no the arabs those Spring wars was don't count over uh two-way ham radio um, okay they didn't they didn't make it to the grammy so yeah, yeah so what <sighs> Uh, but uh, here, but it's not even better. So this is the big battle between the two most mm. dominant political systems in the world today. Free market rule of law democracy versus authoritarian kleptocracy. 
the Swedish expert on the Russian economy, Anders Asland, remarked to me. I know you'll recognize that name. Anders Asland? I would like to unalive myself right now. This is too much. Yeah. No, we're not even halfway through. So uh, I'll continue from where we left off. So in T... Mm-hmm. They see the uh, Russia's economy being weakened by Western sanctions. Thousands of its young technologists fleeing to escape a government denying them access to the Internet. Incredible news and its in- inept army seemingly unable to gather, share, and funnel accurate information to the top. Those leaders have to be asking themselves, holy cow, am I that vulnerable? Or no, it says, holy cow, com- I can't do it right. Never mind. I- why did I even try? No, I, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. I got to interrupt you. I got to stop. I got to stop. I got to stop. I can't do this. I can't fucking do this. I can't do this. this is what you get How the late. fuck can you call it a, 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 a battle between uh, rule of law democracy and authoritarian kleptocracy when you helped form that kleptocracy? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. And uh, man. Uh, uh, yeah, the Ukrainian government known for its rule of law and and no, he he democracy. was one of he was one of Yeltsin's handlers. Mm-hmm. Anders what? Aslund. How the f- I'm trying what? to keep my Wait, composure he was? here, but we like I yes, didn't know that. yes. Jesus Christ! I uh. can't do man. I can't do this. This is why like. This is why me writing was probably always the better option. Like me not being on camera. And writing things was probably the better option for me as a journalist. Um, having to be on stream and react to things in real time. I didn't actually read this article because I've been on the road all morning. But I knew that whenever I was going to read it, I'd have to do it in a quiet corner of the house and not have any like internet capable devices near me. So I could just like scream into the void and hear nothing back. And then perhaps come up with like a logical and like fact-based and rational and reasonable response to any of this shit i can't watch it in real time it this is too much this is too much well this is your you're in purgatory because you're late so i'm gonna finish okay <laughs> in world war one and world war two no one had a smartphone phone or access to social networks through which to observe and participate in the world in non-kinetic ways Indeed, a large chunk of the world's population was still colonized and did not have the full freedom to express independent views even if they had the technology by whom thomas by whom many he's also he's also implying that you know social media is like inherently like everything in social media inherently moves freely and openly and information gets dispersed because obviously like you said all these other countries have smartphones but we never see anything coming out of that yeah well to make that the smart their smartphones in donbass and we don't see anything coming coming out of that Besides our little social circle. Yeah. And the argument he has to make here is that those like social media uh, observations and watching it through social networks and stuff is actually having a reciprocal effect. Because in World War One and World War Two, they had people on the ground reporting on it. And you had like fucking radio stuff and all that shit. Uh, the, but what he's saying here is that they couldn't affect the situation with the, those with those while they were watching it in those ways. Now with social media, they can have a tangible effect. Uh, there weren't granted connected, globalized, and urbanized lower and middle classes of today's wild wor- wired world. Now, anyone with a smartphone can view what is happening in Ukraine live and in color and express opinions globally through social media. In our post-colonial world, governments from virtually every country around the globe can vote to condemn or excuse one side or another in Ukraine to the UN General Assembly. While estimate, estimates vary, it appears that between 3 billion and 4 billion on the planet, almost half, so undercutting his argument right there, half of the half of the world cannot do the things he's saying uh, make this a difference, uh, have a smartphone today. And although internet censorship remains a real problem, particularly in China, so there's another 3 billion right off the bat there that he has to, who have cell phones that he has to go, well, they don't count, uh, remains a real problem. Uh, there are just so many people able to peer deeply into so many more places. And that's not all. Anyone with a smartphone and a credit card can aid strangers in Ukraine through Airbnb by just reserving a night <laughs> at their home and not using it. Teenagers anyway, anywhere can create apps on Twitter t- to track... By the way, I would get murked if I if I like wrote the word Hamas in a Venmo transaction to a friend. Yeah. 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 Like, you know how, how tr- like, even, yeah, just there were people who did, even if you didn't put Hamas in it and you were just trying to mm. like raise money for Palestinians, you were, it's mm. like, well, then you raise money. Even if you write Cuba, apparently, uh, yeah. transactions will be cut off. Mm-hmm. Teenagers, any, uh, uh, 
to track Russian oligarchs and their yachts, and the encrypted instant messaging app Telegram, which was invented by two Russian. Teenagers can't. Can what the fuck are you talking about? Teenagers can create apps on Twitter to track yeah. Russian. This is the most. You don't understand. create apps on Twitter. Yeah, no, I was I was wondering if anyone was going to catch that one because it's like this is the it's you do your little apps on the Twitters. What the fuck you got are your... you talking about? Well, I think he's referring to just bots. That's great. But then I've, I've seen some of those. But the, what the is bots? It, okay? Even if you could, let's say that you create a Twitter bot. What does this have to do with a Russian oligarch and their yacht? What is what does one have to do with the other? I, like maybe it's like this a is bot. like this is like yeah because someone dad, like, so, like this someone is like made... your granddad who needs you to program his VCR saying like hey uh, can't you create an app uh, to make sure that I don't miss my stories like what are you talking about yeah yeah no it's it's just yeah do your little do your little apps on the Twitter machine and uh, find the Russian yachts the kids are the kids just they're so wild with technology I mean, that's the thing because uh, someone made one of that for uh, tracking Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. And and th that like had to be shut down by the state. Yeah. Oh, here's the great part. So he's talking about the about uh about uh Telegram has emerged as the go-to place for unfiltered live war updates for both Ukrainian refugees and increasingly isolated Russians alike. NPR reported, and it's run out of and, Dubai and ABS news enjoyers like yeah. myself. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ukraine's government has been able to tap a whole new source of funding, raising more than 70 million worth of cryptocurrency from individuals around the world. Well, it's 70 million as of writing, but it's going to be like five bucks by next week uh, around the world after appealing on social media donations. And the Tesla billionaire Elon Musk act activated his SpaceX company's satellite broadband service in Ukraine to provide high speed Internet after a Ukrainian official tweeted at him for help from Russian efforts to disconnect Ukraine from the world. I don't think he did that though, because he needs you need to have like like modules installed on the ground to pick up the satellite feeds. It's not he can't just point the satellites at like yeah and, Ukraine and they have internet now. And Ukrainian infrastructure is also getting just wrecked by Russian missiles. Yeah, there's no yeah. way that actually materialized in anything. Just I don't like, know if you saw. Did you see any clip of them speaking? It was so cheesy. Wait, uh, Musk and Zelensky? Elon and, and Zelensky. Yeah, no, Elon's, Elon's just like, yeah, I, I will do oh, this. God, Elon's talking yeah. to Zelensky. Yeah, Jesus everything, everything you're telling me right now is designed like to inflict maximum psychic. Well, damage. you didn't. Did you watch I, his Grammy speech? He did a Grammy speech. Yeah, yeah, he's having like Batman. It was wild. Yeah, yeah. he played it in the beginning of the stream. But he, he was given like a very poetic script. He read it with a Batman voice. But the funniest part was that he was like, uh, Russian missiles are creating silence. Fill the silence with your music. Mm -hmm. That I... very like flowy, uh, a poetic language that uh, Grammy watching lives. I want to get down on all up. fours and like headbutt my way through the Earth's mantle. Okay. I, 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 Jesus Christ. This is like the dumbest. I, I don't know, man. What a way to go out. What a way for humanity to go out. You know what? Fuck it. You know, in at the no fly zone, just like launching news. I don't give a fuck anymore. I don't care. Yeah. So, uh, let's pick up. What? Where were we? Oh, yeah. No, I'll pick up. Uh, such non governmental, super empowered global pay players. Uh, and platforms were not present in World War One or World War Two. Yeah, Germany but, didn't exist. Yeah, there were no like. <laughs> uh, yeah, no IBM. They didn't do it. The world's war. The world wars were not in imperial. Don't ask video. any of the large corporations what they were doing in World War Two. Yeah, <laughs> they were. They were just doing nothing. They were hands off. Standard they, Oil was not involved at all. Yeah. Uh, Hugo Boss, uh, uh, Volkswagen. Don't ask that. They they have they were hands off. They didn't want to get involved. Uh, but just so many more people can affect this war, so too can more be affected by it. Russia and Ukraine are key suppliers of wheat and fertilizer to the agricultural supply chains that now feed the world and that this war has disrupted. A war between just two countries, Europe, has spiked the price of food for Brazilians, Indians, and Africans. Yeah, was there... Because, you know, Indian, the food supply in India was in, in no way affected by any of the, the wars Why? in Europe. Why? That never happened. Why? That, this... Here's a really good question to ask. Why? The world wars were extracting soldiers Why from... Why are the world food wars. supplies in Brazil 
and any country in Africa affected? That's a very good question to ask, I think. No, because yeah. Africa can the African continent can produce plenty of fertilizer. Why why is it that any country on the African continent would be affected by developments happening in Europe? <laughs> is that is that a possible question you'd want to ask Thomas L. Friedman? Nope. Would you would you want to ask why Brazil, one of the most like for, first of all, like one of the largest countries, um is like one of the one of the largest countries, period, like in terms of uh just sheer geography. Why would Brazil, which is a very large and very fertile country, why would they be affected by uh, the disruption of wheat exports and fertilizer export? Why, why would that happen? Because just the Ukraine, they sell the best. They sell the best wheat, and everybody wants their wheat. So no one else. So why would the Brazil? Does every country on earth even eat wheat? Uh, yes, is everyone is loves. Crop everyone country? loves. Everyone loves. Sliced yeah. white bread. That is, as everyone Could knows, be. every culture in the world eats sliced white bread. Sliced white bread. Yeah, that is, that's what they enjoy. This is Bleached the newspaper of record mm -hmm. for America. Uh, yeah, uh, and because Russia is one of the world's biggest exporters of natural gas, crude oil, and the diesel fuel used by farmers in their tractors, the sanction on Russia's energy infrastructure are curbing ex exports, causing gasoline pump prices to rise from Minneapolis to Mexico to Mumbai. Ooh, you found three cities with M's in them and forcing farmers as far away as Argentina to ration their d diesel powered tractor usage or cut, f cut fossil fuel rich fertilizer usage jeopardizing Argentina's agriculture exports and adding further to soaring world food prices. There's another unexpected financial global globalization angle on this war that you really need to keep your eye on. Putin saved up over 600 billion in gold, foreign government bonds and foreign currency earned from all over Russia's energy and mineral exports, precisely so he could would have a cushion if he were sanctioned by the West. But Putin apparently forgot that in today's wired world, as a standard practice, his government had deposited most of it in the banks of Western countries and China. Did he forget that? Do you think it actually just slipped his mind? Yeah, I don't. I don't think he forgot where he was banking all of that money. No. According to the Atlantic Council Ge Economic Center. Oh wait, is this is this is this Friedman's? I'm just wondering why he would have said something stupid like that. So is this Friedman? Is this, is he moving towards an explanation for why they're demanding uh, money for their gas and rubles? Is that what he's trying to do here? Um, possibly. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I, I, a lot of this is to paint the picture that Russia is losing. I don't know if you like every, like every single think piece that's coming out is premised on this idea that Russia is losing it. His main argument is that here too that because of all the apparent apparently cell phones that exist in the West, Russia is now losing. And earlier in the essay, he even explicitly said that uh, Russia wasn't expecting some of the things that had happened, but it's all BS. Yeah, no, he's literally saying that. Oh, Putin did a whoopsie, and now we have all of his money. Like, yeah, is it, like right. that's his his mess. It's literally mess. It's coping. It's all coping. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like the decade of of, of articles that were saying that China's going to collapse. Mm -hmm. His met yeah, because he, he writes right here. Message to Putin: Thanks for banking with us. It would be right. legally difficult to seize your savings for reparations, but you'd better get your lawyers ready. I feel like the last twenty years in like media discourse as far as pertains to geopolitics like after 9 11 it feels like italy's years of lead except replace lead with stupidity and that's pretty much where we're at for mm -hmm. media discourse yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah the years of lead balloon ideas uh for all these reasons all of those leaders around the world who have drifted towards some version or another of putin inspired authoritarian capitalism or kleptocracy have to be worried though they will not be easily dislodged no matter what happens in Russia. These regimes have become adept at using new surveillance technologies to control political opponents and information flows and to manipulate their politics and state financial resources to keep themselves ensconced in power. We're talking about Turkey, Myanmar, China, North Korea, Peru, Brazil, Philippines, Hungary, and several Arab states, but not the ones we, we sell the weapons to. Don't think about those ones. Uh, Putin was surely hoping that a second Trump term might transform America into a version of this kind of strongman kleptocracy and tip the whole global balance his way. Then came this. So that's, oh. that's interesting because Trump, not being a neoliberal, wanted to do the complete opposite of what the neoliberals have been doing, uh, mainly bringing industry back to the U.S., breaking down some of these international supply chains, you know, like getting the U.S. out of NAFTA, setting up like breaking these trade deals 
And all those processes would have been great for the development of other nations free of some, like, because it would have weakened the grip of the neoliberals on those nations. So, yes, Trump's policies. Not exactly, um, because, so, I mean, yes, I, I see what you're, where you're going with this, Hassan, but you forget that Trump's negotiating tactic go a little something like this. If I would like to buy, I don't know, I would like to buy a, a car from you, okay? Um, now, the normal way that you would go about buying a car is that you go to the dealership, you, let's just simplify this, get rid of like the whole financing, whatever. You go to the dealership with like a suitcase of cash, okay? You give them a the suitcase of cash, and then you get the car. Trump's way of doing business is a little something like this. Okay, so you want to buy a car from me. You give me personally, give me the money, and I will mm -hmm. get you the car. And then you give him the money, and he's like, wait a second, hang on. It's like, I've got both the money and the car right now. So why don't you need to sweeten the pot? Like, I know that I have your money, but I've got both the money and the car. So why don't you sweeten the pot so I'll give you the car? The The issue is um, if you break down that uh, global supply chain, if you break down the uh, – like the, the the offshoring and the loss of jobs, et cetera, and bring back manufacturing to America. Um, and I get what you're saying with this. Like that would be necessary to uh, develop uh, industrial capacity inside of these other countries. Hopefully they hang on to their talents. It's not about necessary or not. Really, the, the but, point is but that. Here's where, here's where I'm going yeah. with this. Like in the short term, at the very least, it's still going to require trade with some of the larger uh, countries, America leading the charge here. If you want to trade with the United States and Donald Trump is president um, and you need, you have goods that you want to offload so that other countries can make them into finished products, which is where the majority of the global South is in, in terms of their in, uh, industrial development. Mm -hmm. What, what, what on earth makes anyone think that Donald Trump would want to um, abide by like proper and fair trade terms? What that probably well, would not. look like, yeah. What, what that would look like is, yeah, yeah, yeah sure, yeah. Send, send us all the goods that you have. Um, we'll we'll go ahead and you know create some sort of like a financing scheme, and we'll make sure that we pay you back over X, Y, and Z term. And then America has the the agricultural or mineral resource goods in America, but they haven't actually like paid out all the money yet. And he would do everything that he could to make sure that the money doesn't get paid out. That's just the way he does business. The, the main point is that he has a lot less incentive than the new liberals to do everything that Biden, that Biden did yeah. in Ukraine. That's the thing. I mean, he's, he's very protectionist. He's very like non-interventionist to, to an extent, at least a lot less than the new liberals are. So, I mean, I see the point here. Uh, Putin has every reason to prefer a Trump in presidency or like this, uh, anti hegemony, like capitalist who is doing his own thing and not abiding no, no, by. No, I think he's he's very much um, like the kind of person that wants to maintain American hegemony, but wants to maintain it. And like you have to understand that. No, of course uh, he wants to maintain it. For the yeah. for the libertarian types, you know, the, I mean, there, there's a reason that the word anti interventionist came from libertarian circles, and it's because. As far as they're concerned, what they want is for capital to flow freely, but humans to not flow freely. So mm -hmm. to for capital to um, at least like remain with the U.S. such that the U.S. is able to maintain economic and military hegemony, but they don't have to spend as much money, um, manpower and resources, uh, either developing other countries or shaping the political structure of other countries. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much like, hey, we want we want to be able to like build and sell our shit. We would like to import your shit in order to do it, but past that, we don't have any relationship with one another. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly, and th this is the point. But the thing is, like, I think you're right in that Trump represents that, but this Friedman guy is completely reframing that no, into some into some like evil Putin Trump conspiracy of uh, quote unquote kleptocracy. Right, because what Friedman the, represents it, it, is the yeah. the idea that I uh, like no nation should have any loyalty or obligation to its to the people that live within it mm -hmm. so it's like you can be um you can be bound by the social contract but not necessarily protected by the social mm -hmm. contract that, that's that's mm -hmm. pretty much like what the uh, the neoliberal types yeah i mean house. yeah they, they're that, really they, they want people to abide by the terms laid out it you know in the social contracts by the rule of law etc like you are an american behave like an american abide by american laws but it, as long as you have a, uh, a a stack of incorporation paperwork in some 
I don't know, some uh, warehouse in Delaware, then you actually don't have to abide by any of these rules. You can just do whatever the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, in the end, Friedman is rationalizing uh, why Putin would prefer Trump in the end. Right. I mean, and that, and that's the reality. He would. And I think any almost any other country would prefer Trump in presidency. All righty. Should we I mean, continue? Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's make sure I figure out where we were. Oh, yeah. We're almost done anyways. Uh, so uh, to be sure, Ukraine's democracy is frail and the country has had its own serious issues with oligarchs and corruption. Q's burning aspiration, though, was not to join NATO, but to join the European Union. Union, And it was the process of cleaning itself up to do just that. Was it? Uh, that's what really triggered this war. Kiev's Putin. aspiration, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair, yeah. Not Ukraine, Kiev. And, uh, but that, yeah, so that's what triggered this war was Kiev was trying to, was getting rid of the corruption. And that's what forced Putin's hand. Cause he's like, no, no, you have to keep the corruption. Cause I'm a, I'm a evil uh, kleptocrat as oh literally that's what he's gonna say putin was never going to let slavic ukraine become a successful free market democracy in the eu next door to his stagnating slavic it, russian kleptocracy it's funny how those who say yo who i dan was raiding with party 27 hello uh, welcome i dan crew. welcome, welcome. Well, the, the, the funny thing is that uh leadership that would say no to nato is corrupt mm -hmm. but, I, but i mean that's how he defines it essentially yeah yeah, well, well, well. He's saying that uh, that uh, uh, that Zelensky and Kiev specifically were not didn't weren't interested in NATO, but they're actually just interested in the European Union. Mm -hmm. It was never about they never wanted to join NATO, anyways. Uh, which is some odd uh, uh, rewriting of history. The contrast would have been too intolerable for uh, for Putin. That is the contrast between a successful free market democracy. Uh, in the Slavic Ukraine next door to a stagnating Slavic Russian kleptocracy. And that's why he is trying to erase Ukraine. But Putin, it turns out, had no clue what world he was living in. No clue about the frailties of his own system. No clue how much the whole world, the whole free democratic world, could and would join the fight against him in Ukraine. And no clue, most of all, about how many people would be watching. I, I think yeah, Putin, Putin didn't know that the West's media infrastructure existed. Is essentially what the article is saying. Yeah, he was like, "Oh shit, Wolf Blitzer's there. We're fucked." They've sent him in with the. They've sent him in in the in the 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 the, uh, the little bib that says mm -hmm. press. And Putin, Putin has a lot of experience too. You know, uh, he saw how Libya was roped into this. He saw how Syria was roped into this. I mean, Russia defended Syria and saw the propaganda campaigns, but apparently Putin had no idea. Yeah, the, the, that's what I'm saying. The whole Arab, yeah. like just the Arab Spring, didn't happen. Yeah, he had no Yemen, idea. like it, it, Israel, Palestine. He know, like he knows that social media exists. I think, yeah. like, does Friedman think he he, he knows how they Arab operate? Yeah, I mean, Pu like Russia had to deal with two Chechen wars, and uh, Putin went to Bush and told told Bush he was like, "I have evidence. Our state has evidence that your intelligence is." Uh, funding Islamic extremism in the Chechen Republic. And Bush was like, uh, okay, uh, I'll deal with it. Uh, Putin never heard back from Bush. And instead, Russian intelligence got a letter from US intelligence, CIA, say, basically saying we don't care, saying we know, and there's nothing mm -hmm. you can do about it. You know? so, like Putin knows how the US operates. And Putin also knows how disconnected a, a president can be from the operations of like the American capitalist, you know, like the CIA is very, uh, like it's very separated from the state there. Even, even within the CIA, there's like no centralized leadership. There are different factions in the CIA who are beholden to different, like different capitalists and the capitalists just directly tell them what to do and, and how to operate. It's not like well, Biden is sitting yeah. there directing them, but Trump is a type of president who shakes things up a bit. Obviously he's also beholden to the ruling class. But not in, like he's not a career politician in the sense that Biden is, who was completely completely absorbed into yeah. into their world. Well, he was a bit of an unknown quantity at that. Yeah, level. exactly. No, yeah. not yeah. no one at that level were like, how do you fucking deal with this guy? We've exactly. never had to That's deal with someone is, like yeah. this. Right, right. It's that. It's the. I think that probably the best was the, it was the John Mulaney joke where it's like the horse in the hospital. It's like, 
like it's just it's just a he's just a guy but no one's ever dealt with this situation before and it's just it's, yeah it, you know yeah. it's hard to trust him because again he's not a career politician he hasn't gone yeah. through the system for 30 years and, and have been groomed into becoming yeah. a president like biden has they don't know which which of like there's all those factions but like when they get a guy in those factions usually know who he's going to be sort of like uh more uh like deferential to and who's mm. which faction he like uh, sides with more often than not yeah, yeah. with trump it was like it was just whichever wh whatever he felt like who, who yeah he spoke and, to and, and that could also change by the month yeah you know and, he, and the last president to like openly even talk about this got murked jfk you know who, who mm -hmm. wanted to just abolish the cia but like but anyway the point is putin knows all this putin knows exactly how U.S. intelligence operates in the favor of U.S. capitalists. He knows their propaganda machine, uh, especially in, in in Russian engagement in Syria for over ten years now. Um, Putin knows about how uh, NGOs infiltrate institutions of civil society, like in uh, the like in the Republic of Chechnya, and obviously, I'm sure China's feeding him information of how they've been operating in Xinjiang as well, right? Like he's not separated from all this stuff but the ruling class wants you to believe that he is and the ruling class for some reason wants you to believe that russia is just losing mm -hmm. but well that we've gone this, over this before they, they want mm -hmm. you to believe at the same time that ukraine is just moments away from falling but also putin mm -hmm. has completely yeah. fucked this up and is yeah. on the retreat right exactly because it's like when it's that whole thing where it's like our enemies are strong and weak at the same time, but that also means we have to be strong and weak at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just love how this article, it, it, like, not even in separate paragraphs, but literally in the same paragraph, is arguing that Putin is both a despotic criminal mastermind and also the dumbest motherfucker on earth. Right. Yeah. It's the exact same contradiction that Sue's pointing out. Mm -hmm. It's applied differently. Yeah, well, also, the, his whole point, and I'm looking back to find the numbers he has, but his whole point is that anyone, it, like, this is the World War Wired. This is World War Wired, and everyone can, uh, can uh, like, uh, contribute and access and watch and uh, communicate about the war in real time. And then he has to completely undercut that by going, like, well... Only the half of the population on the planet with access to uh, like a f cell phone or an internet connection. And then that 4 billion that I'm talking about, I then have to remove the amount from China because I have to get in there that they're like an authoritarian regime that uh, has a, f a firewall. So none of the internet and their information is all lies. So I have to chop off that 4 billion again. So it's just uh, he's left with there's 1 billion people with access to a cell phone who are tweeting about it. So that makes this the real world war. <laughs> right. When right. you do all, when you cut, cut down all the math. Yeah. World war is not, def is apparently not defined by nations competing for hegemony, but rather it's defined by how many cell phones are mm -hmm. videotaping the atrocities. Yeah.